I can't believe more people aren't talking about this hit from the last episode. Replay it. Huge hit. Take a seat, Oscar Gormley. Oh my god, take a seat yourself. Michael Rasmussen, six foot six. Oh, take a seat to you. Oh my god. What is going on, guys? And welcome back once again. Here we are, GM Week, with your Shanghai Dragons. And in the last episode, we unfortunately got bounced in seven games. Kool Aid in the comments says, The moment you said a dragon can definitely beat up a knight all day, every day, in quote, I knew you would lose a series. Classic X Tech Jinx. And we had a chance to get rid of the Prog Knights right here on Saturday, May 6th. We had it by the grasp. We just had it. It was so close in overtime. Felix Pox with the game six hat trick. And then, unfortunately, Damn Michael Rasmussen, he goes on to score the overtime winner, and then we fall apart in Game 7, and boom, once again, we are on the outside looking in, and the Seattle Storm Bears are Stanley Cup champions. So we got ourselves quite an off-season ahead of us here, but since this is GM Week, remember, you got a video from Sunday to Sunday, every single day. The videos aren't going to be 45 minutes to an hour long. They're going to be a bit shorter, but it's going to be easier to watch because you're going to get a video every single day day. I think you guys that have been around for a little while, you kind of know how GM week works. That's going to be kind of the system throughout the next week, maybe half an hour long episodes. But uh, since I'm in quarantine now, I'm no longer at work. We're pretty much doing nothing all day. I can't afford to create a video every single day for the week. Who knows? Maybe I'll do two weeks of GM week. I don't know at this point. We're going to take it day by day. But here's how everyone looked during the postseason. 69 nice shots for Felix Pox averaging a goal per game but we do have a comment to go over and this is going to talk about our goal scoring production which definitely wasn't great but we're going to have a year where everyone is going to be one year older we got one year older of Brant Clark one year of Shane Wright hopefully Cole Lynn starts to grow 24 years old he's been hovering around that 77 to 79 overall unfortunately he hasn't made the jump so Brandon Barenfeld the GOAT he says the plan for this offseason should definitely be to beef up that second line of yours. JFK and Lind are good, but at this point they might be better suited for a third line, or at least JFK is. I'm thinking more along the lines of Cole Lind being on the third line, but I can definitely see what you're saying about JFK. He's very spotty. Sometimes he'll just show up and score, you know, 38 goals, and then other times he'll be a 20 goal guy. He could be a 20 goal third liner, and that's not the worst thing in the world. And obviously we did something a little bit unconventional. We ended up canning our coach right before the postseason, New Jersey Devils style. We came very close from going to the semifinals in the postseason, but I think getting back Ryland Meyer was the right thing to do. We got a comment here. After you demoted Bickle, your staff chemistry went up from 43 to 50%, and your AHO chemistry went down from 28 to 25, dot, dot, dot. Maybe Bickle was the issue. So Ryland Meyer, you can see here, back in the mix, A+, plus, A-, minus, A+, plus, A, A+, plus, and B. He's been a really good coach for us and I think we kind of got rid of him a little bit too soon after a 59 win season I think we were really upset at the playoff performance we let him go he ended up going to the stags and now he's back here with the dragons all three of his postseasons have been with our team so I'm happy to have Rylan Meyer back behind the bench our new bench boss well our new ish bench boss now I got one more comment here neon strike he says x tech please tell us what teams were replaced by by your custom teams. I would like to know because I'm an Islanders fan and I want to root for the team that got replaced. All right, I can do that for you. So here is the list. Now this, I believe, is 100% updated. Uh, this guy wanted to look at the Islanders, so the Helsinki Hellcats took over the New York Islanders. So basically all the legends were in a fantasy draft, so that doesn't matter. You're basically looking at the teams uh, that replaced the NHL team. So there you go. You can pause and look at it all you want, but that's how it looks out. I didn't do anything specifically. I just basically went uh, Pacific, the Central, the Atlantic, and the Metro. I didn't put any specific created team with any NHL team or anything like that. I just basically did completely random. So there was basically no bias here. All right, so let's get the NHL draft underway. I'm going to wait and see in free agency if there's
there's any big players because I think we're going to have a little bit of money to spend and the draft is going to be unfortunately relatively boring because we don't have a pick and people were saying I should move into the top 10 for real if I was to move into a top 10 pick let's say I say what's up to New York here and I say hey what's it going to take for your seventh overall pick we don't really have enough to trade for that pick I'd have to give up like Clem Costin and our second for next year to even get the conversation going I don't think it's worth it our plan was to kind of sacrifice this year anyways regarding the draft right before the draft we actually sent an offer to James Avagetti so hopefully he signs a contract because I don't want to have to go into a big giant contract negotiation with that guy but the Tokyo Ice Tigers all right they have the first overall pick for moving up 12 to 1 which is ridiculous in my personal opinion I would go with the Russian here since they already have a really good left winger in Agent C. There's no point to get another one. So I would potentially go with the Russian, Dmitry Nikolaishin. Uh, he would be my pick, but let's see what the AI does. You guys are so damn lucky moving up from 12. Who are they going to pick? And they don't pick the Russian, but this guy looks like a stud. Lucas Verdino, what a guy. Yeah, this guy's a freak. Look at his shooting category. Yeah, of course you guys need another left wing sniper. Oh my god. That's going to make our rivalry that much more difficult. Now, the Norway Ninjas, they pick the power forward. Oh, man, this guy would have been so good to get. Oh, he would have been awesome. His puck skills are a little bit less. Everything is actually pretty even. You can see, like, not a lot is changed. The skating category is worse on Dimitri. The senses are about the same. I guess they're pretty evenly matched. The physical category on Dimitri is obviously a little bit better. It is uh, three and a half stars as opposed to three stars for Isaac. But really, I mean, both of these players are absolute studs. What a pick from the Norway Ninjas. Now, the third overall pick, the consolation prize, is Reimer. Austin Reimer. This guy had over 90 points here. Where did he play last year? Sorry, he had exactly 90 points, and he played in the OHL. So there you go. A nice little center there for the Yukon Iceman. Let's move on here to Tucson. What are they going to do? Uh, ooh, 66 high top four. Ooh, is that a draft miss? Yes, that was a draft miss. Oh my God, you guys missed out on Quincy Thornton. What a name. A six foot three defensive defenseman. Yikes. Tucson, what are you doing, homeboy? Uh, oh my God, Sue. What a draft pick as well. Caden Sue for the Saskatchewan Stags. 120 points in 68 games. Not bad, not bad. Now, the seventh overall pick, another 80 overall. It's actually a very deep draft. Holy. All right, let's go all the way to our pick at 102. But before we do that, I want to have a look at the Red Deer Ice Hawks because that's going to be our first, or I guess one of our firsts. They picked uh, Zachary Boss. It's a pretty awesome name, not going to lie. A five foot nine sniper, Zachary Boss. And then their other pick, which was right here, Blackburn. Jesus Blackburn. Oh my God. Another guy who's only five foot nine. So they took two five foot nine snipers. I believe this would have been our pick uh, right here at 18. That's my guess. I can't really tell, but uh, yeah, there you go. Two picks for them in the first round. A 75 overall at pick number 30. Not bad. All right, so our pick at 102nd overall, we can go with Omar Suter, who is a defensive defense, sorry, two-way defenseman. Daniel Jodry, um, he is a 17-year-old, 6'2", 195. Definitely won't hurt us to get another goaltending prospect, 102nd overall. We don't have that many goaltending prospects. We have that Nikolishin, that Russian who's medium elite. Let's pick another goaltender here. Goalies usually have pretty good trade value anyways. Daniel, what's he looking like? He is 57 medium starter. Okay, what do we miss out on here? Uh, Sutter was 58 medium top six. Okay. Uh, Weinrich, low top nine, 61 overall. Just hoping we didn't miss out on like a franchise player player or anything here. It is the fourth round, so it's pretty unlikely. Let's go all the way up to 111th here. We have another fourth round pick here. So we picked a goalie. Wouldn't mind picking a forward or a defenseman here. I'm thinking about picking a winger here or Ural Hurd. 
what a name. Your real herd? <laughs> what the hell are these names? Uh, Pedro Nichols. Oh my God, some fantastic names do here. Going a little bit off the board here. Let's go with Griffin out of the U.S. Development Program. 60 overall, medium top nine. What do we miss out on? Uh, low top nine. Sorry, he's a low top nine, not medium top nine. Low top nine, low top nine for Hurd. So basically the exact same players. All right, time to pick a defenseman here. I got a goalie, got a forward. How about a D-man? Uh, we got McPhee. We got Tate McPherson. What a name. Or we can go with a medium seventh D. You know what? I said I'm going to pick a defenseman, but I'm going to go with another forward here. A six foot four confirmed low bottom six, 60 overall in the fifth round. I will take that. McPherson only 56. Brathwaite was 60. Okay. Okay, now we can think about picking a defenseman here. In the sixth round, 173rd overall. Of course, there's no defenseman available. Of course. The first one, oh my god, he has one bar medium franchise potential. Yeah, I highly doubt he's going to be anything special. But let's pick him. The first defenseman available, Hudson Low, High franchise. Uh, no, he is low elite, 48 overall. Hey, I'll take that. All the way up to 204th here. This should be our last selection. I know I said the draft wasn't going to be anything crazy. Uh, we got a 20-year-old here. You guys know I like picking 20-year-olds. Uh, what else we got? We got a confirmed medium fringe starter. A 6'2 finish goalie. Or we can go with Ricard Ristolainen. I'm going to go with the confirmed. We're going to pick another goalie here. Let's continue on building our goaltending crop. 52 medium fringe starter. What do we miss out on? Probably nothing super special. Rista Linen was 58 overall. Yeah, nothing really special in this draft. I told you guys it was going to be kind of a boring draft, and it was. I mean, at 173rd, getting low wasn't a bad pick, I guess. Low elite. It's not terrible. He's definitely a project, though. I think he's 48 overall, so he's definitely a project. Uh, James Vaghetti says no. Okay, so we're going to have to beef up the money here. I knew we were going to have to do that, but I'm cool with it. Let's go ahead and give him basically whatever he wants. We have $60 million to work with. First of all, what about Vernasty? He wants 10.2 for seven years. How about six years at $9.7 million? There you go. Come on, baby. Sign on the dotted line. Uh, as for Clem Costin, he's going to want like nine, right? Oh, actually, that's not a bad contract. 7.1. How about, what if I do, yeah. If I go up, he's going to want big boy money. He wants a one-year deal. You know what? I'm kind of cool with that. Let's go one-year deal with $7 million bucks. Again, we have a ton of cap right now, so I'm kind of cool with this. Uh, Cole Lind, we're going to tender qualify. Casey Fitzgerald, he's going to want like $5 million bucks or $6 million. We're going to go ahead and do the qualify because they will sign eventually for like $2 million bucks because they're going to have no interest in free agency. JFK, I definitely want to bring back. That's a pretty fair contract, actually. Two .9 for three years. I'm definitely cool with that. Uh, I'll worry about all these other guys, all these small guys after, but I definitely want to worry about James Vaghetti. Let's go ahead and get him inked to a contract here. I want to give him a two-year deal. I'll give him two years at nine million bucks. Let's see if he says yes to that. So a lot of these like low 70 overall, 27-year-old guys, I think we're going to probably pass on. I know they could probably play in our AHL team, but I think we're going to be spending some money here in free agency. So let's get everyone inked to a contract. Ryan McGinnis, he's good to go. James Vaghetti says, yes, there you go. Two years, nine million. Quick little 18 million for you, James. Things you love to see. JFK is good to go. Clem Costin's good to go. Del Mastro is good to go. Vernasty, he's cool with the 9.5. There you go. Now, how much money do we have in free agency now? We're going to have $38 million to work with. Wait, I got to do Honka first, actually. I forgot about him. He wants 12.2. Oof, that's a lot of money. That is a lot of currency. Um, how about we go 12 by 2? I know it's a lot. I know it's a lot to pay. Don't get me wrong. But you think here, if you're looking at the overalls, he's, he's like a 65, 70 point D man. He's our captain. He's got to be paid fairly. If you, you know, convert the overalls, you're probably looking at like a 94 overall here in the real NHL. But this is the X Tech Hockey League, and things are a little bit crazy. I don't want to go seven years. I definitely. We don't want to go seven years. I'll go two at 11, four, five. All right. It's a lot of money. Don't get me wrong. It's a ton of money for Honka. But if you, if you do the inflation for the overalls, it makes sense. 
I highly doubt we're going to be able to get an 86 overall. Uh, there you go. He actually agreed to that, which is awesome. So that cuts our cap down a little bit. We are going to now have just over 20 million, sorry, 27. So it's still a ton of money to work with. We're in a good position here. We have our franchise goalie. We have a whole bunch of players. I'm going to write out the team and then we're going to have a look at free agency, all that good stuff. I think we're going to spend some money here. Let's check what's in free agency. Let's write out the squad. Let's go. All right. So here is how the squad is looking. We're going to go from the bottom up here. So James Vigetti, obviously he's going to be our starter. No question there. As for the backup, you're looking at it's going to be Kakinen or Varlamov. Unfortunately, Nikushin is just a few years away. So he's going to be probably next year or the year after. But Kakinen is growing where Varlamov has been shady at best. I don't know. It was a great pick in the fifth round. He's only 21 years old. We could throw him in the minors, see if he grows. Again, he's only 21. And then Kakinen's kind of just been chilling out here. So defensively, we're good to go. I wouldn't mind getting some better defensemen out there. I wouldn't mind getting maybe another 80 to play alongside a Honka and have a really good one-two punch and then have Fitzy and Clark. That's only if free agency is going to be nice to us. We definitely need to get a second line winger. I'm hoping there's a big piece in free agency. Uh, and then we're going to go basically a fourth line winger. And then it looks like we're basically good to go. Uh, I'm hoping either Shane Wright is going to grow or Clem Costin's going to grow. I've seen Clem Costin get up to like 88 overall. If that's the case, we're laughing. We have $25 million to work with and look who it is. Taylor Rash. Oh, wait, he's an RFA. Okay, let's get that shit out of here. I really, really hoped he was going to be a UFA. That sucks. There's actually a ton of RFAs out here, but it looks like Taro Hirose is out there. That's not a bad option. This guy had a hat trick against us uh, earlier on in the year. He's uh, playing with the Swamp Rabbits for the past four years, but he's out of there. We could get Taro Hirose for the second line. Nine million bucks. Reed Boucher as well is out there. I think he's kind of another JFK type situation, maybe a little bit better. Uh, Reed Boucher wouldn't be bad. Definitely a cheaper option. Not that much cheaper though, 7.8. Ilya Kovalchuk is another option. However, he is 40 years old. I don't think he's really the option to go with. Um, yeah, probably not, honestly. That's, um, that sucks. I wish he was like 34 and still elite. That would be awesome. Uh, Evgeny Svechnikov. Okay, another sniper here. So let's think about this. So what's Taro Hirose? He's a playmaker. What's Shane Wright? Is he a two-way forward or is he a playmaker in his own right? I really like that Taro Hirose kid. That could be pretty cool. Yeah, Shane Wright's a playmaker. So I'm thinking we could go JFK, Shane Wright, and then maybe Taro Hirose. He did have 30 goals. I could change him to a sniper. What do you guys think? This is kind of this is kind of how I wish I had a Discord where I could just ask you guys. I might make a Discord. I don't really know how to work Discord that well, so I might have to wait and uh, figure it out. But let's uh, let's have a look here. We could move Taro Hirose to a sniper. Um, what do we do here? I mean, he's young enough. He's only 27. That's why I don't want to go after a guy like Kovalchuk or Williams because they're going to be gone in like, you know, one or two years max. So Taro Hirose looks like the next big fish. He's a playmaker. How's his... His shooting category isn't fantastic. We might be able to switch some things up here. He does seem like the best player available. Thomas Vanek is too damn old. Justin Williams is way too damn old. Reed Boucher is a decent option. I feel like with the lower overall though, he might be a better suited for the third line, unfortunately. Evgeny Svechnikov is another one. He is a sniper. His stats are kind of all over the place. If we put him with a really good playmaker, Svechnikov could be like a 30 goal guy. He hasn't quite had it yet. He's been in Quebec for all this time. He's managed about 50 points a year. He is a sniper, though, which I like. We, we can go sniper, playmaker, playmaker, or sniper, playmaker, two-way forward. If Taylor Radish wasn't an RFA, I would be all over that. It's really not worth it. It's really not worth sacrificing next year's draft as well. So let's just completely get all of the RFAs out of here. We're strictly only going to focus on UFAs. You know, Svechnikov is the same overall as Taro Hirose. I think we should give the shot to Svechnikov, the older brother of Carolina Hurricanes sniper Andre Svechnikov. I'm thinking him over Taro Hirose. Oh man, am I 74 points? 
it's not really a money thing, but getting him for a little bit cheaper is going to be nicer. Plus, he wants six years, where Svechnikov only wants one. And we might be able to get him for like eight million bucks at one year. That might not be bad. So if we're going to go for Svechnikov, is there any good defenseman available? There's Lawrence Pilot, who's okay. Pilot or Pilute. We could get him from Quebec as well, and then we get both of Quebec's star players. That'd be kind of awesome. Um, he's the best D-man available. JSD. D, he's out here. Where did he end up going? I'm thinking for the next episode, I will do like a recap around the NHL. I'll look around the X-Tech Hockey League, kind of like we've done in the past. So that'll be probably the next episode. JSD didn't even play last year. Weird. A 77 overall sat in free agency for the whole year? That doesn't seem very right. I'm thinking we go after Sveshnikov and Lawrence Pilot. I'm thinking that. That's what I want to do here. Am I pronouncing that right? I know he's a Buffalo Sabres player, but he's put up pretty good numbers with Quebec the past couple years. I'm doing it. We're going after Lawrence. Again, I don't know how to say his last name. I don't want to embarrass myself anymore, but how about 6 point, 6 .75 million for two years? Let's go with that. I don't really want to give you five years. I don't like giving out long-term contracts unless you're a bona fide stud. And then we can go eight million bucks for Evgeny Sveshnikov. Let's try that. All right. Sveshnikov and Lawrence Pilot. We are really upgrading here. And then I'm going to go through and see if there's, ooh, a 20 year old, 76 overall. Why is he in free agency? We have to get this guy. Um, that might change some things, but 20 years old, a low top six, a UFA, what the hell? Absolutely, welcome to the squad. I really hope he signs. There's a lot of them. Another 20 year old UFA here. That guy's 76 overall at 20 years old. That's crazy. So I'm gonna go ahead and fill out our AHL team a little bit here. We'll get some younger guys out there and then we are going to see if these big guys end up signing. All right, so I did some things in free agency. I signed a whole bunch of players for our AHL team and also some bubble players. So we're going to see, hopefully, uh, if a lot of these players sign. I really hope Svechnikov and Lawrence, whatever the hell his last name is. Is it Pilot or Pilot? I have no idea. Um, a third and a fourth for Kakanen. We're going to say no. I'm not going to hold off on the trades for right now. Here are the players. So all these guys are like medium top nine, high top nine. There's a few low top six. But that one guy I'm really interested in is that Finn who is um, 76 overall at 20 years old So most of these guys are gonna be for our American Hockey League team But let's see if the big guys sign here Eric Kopp. He says yes Philip Burgundy what a name you're going to see a lot of these guys aren't super old. Max was like 23 years old I ended up taking. Um, so let's see here. Oscar, he says yes as well. Another defenseman. We're waiting on the big boys here. Let's see. Going into day number five. Svechnikov says no. Oh, my God. He goes back to Quebec. Oh, no. No, no, no. I, I offered you more than what you want. I probably should have went like 8.5. God damn it. All right, okay, um, shit. Okay, that sucks. So we lost out on Svechnikov. Lawrence, he says yes, that's good news. Okay, so along with Svechnikov, another player decides to go elsewhere. Goes to hang out with Ty Ronning, Tyler Steenbergen. I guess Tyler's gotta stay together, that's understandable. And there he is, UC Philstrom. That's the guy, the 76 overall guy. All right, so we gotta get back to free agency here and hope Taro Hirose is still available. He isn't. Oh boy, this sucks. This is bad news, Bears. The next best option is Ilya Kovalchuk. Do we do it? Do we just sign Kovalchuk? He's really the best option available. Oh man, that's not ideal. I was really hoping to go after Svechnikov. There's really no one else available. Brandon Peary? You know what? Let's take the best player available. It's not ideal. I'm doing one year at 7.5 million for Ilya Kovalchuk. He's going to score goals. It's definitely someone for Shane Wright to pass to. However, I really, really wanted Sveshnikov or at least Taro Hirose. But you know what? We got Ilya Kovalchuk. Yeah, we got Kovalchuk. All right. Well, here we are. I mean, I say that hopefully he signs. There's still a potential he won't sign with our team. I'm hoping he will fit into the top six. Kovalchuk says yes. He's coming to Shanghai. The 40-year-old Ilya Kovalchuk. Oh, my goodness. Okay. Uh... <laughs> Let's go.
go to the start of the season. Uh, we're going to see about uh, potentially we got a few more players to sign here. Yeah, you can see here guys like Cole Lind, they will sign because obviously no one else is interested at such a low overall. They're not going to offer sheet him at $7 million. So there's nowhere else to turn but signing with our team. Casey Fitzgerald says yes. There you go. All right, so here we go. You can see Kovalchuk has dropped to a 79, but don't worry because I have seen players that once the regular season starts, they will go up a little bit in overall. So I'm not super worried about this. Uh, Shane Wright, Kovalchuk, and Cole Lind. Now I could swap it with either one of these guys. It doesn't really make a huge difference. Felix Pox, Clint Costin, and Vernasty, we're going to keep that line up together. JFK Pilstrom, who's this young stud. Thank you, Utah. Unfortunately, they didn't qualify him. I have no idea why, but he got picked 69. Nice overall. Uh, yeah, thank you very much, Utah. A 20-year-old 77 overall. I got him on the power play. I'm excited about this kid. And then we got Jansen Harkins, Alexander True, made it right out of camp, and then Ryan McInnes right there. I think True has better face-offs. 74, maybe not. Maybe I lied. Yeah, actually, we're going to put Ryan McInnes right there. And it gives that line a plus one. Things you love to see. Defensively, Brant Clark and Julius Honker, they're going to get the job done. Fitzy and then Lawrence, he's right there with Stillman and Lidstrom. And then between the pipes, we have James Vigetti. And then I have to give a contract to one of our two backup goalies, uh, Roddy Ross. I don't even remember this guy. Well, I guess we just... I guess we just signed him. Uh, I have to go ahead and still give a contract to one of those goalies, so we're not quite done yet. Captains, we're all good to go. Felix Pox for Nasty and Honka. There are some people in the comments saying Honka isn't captain material. I disagree with that. I think he definitely is captain material. He's going to prove it this year, so let's get this thing underway. Let me sign a goalie, and I'm going to get a couple games of simulation done just for fun. All right, so here is the American Hockey League team. It's not perfect, but there's a a lot of players that we signed in free agency so that's kind of nice defensively looking like this very very strong and then the goaltenders are going to be Varlamov and Nachuskin so Nachuskin's going to make the jump over here to professional hockey down here in the American Hockey League and then we're going to roll with Kakinen as the backup 77 overall with James Vigetti as the starter this team is low-key looking pretty damn nice Head coach Rylan Meyer seems happy with the whole situation. Let's go. The next episode, we're going to be doing the look around the X-Tech Hockey League. So don't expect a ton of simulation. We might get the first month done. As for right now, is there any big games we have coming up here that I can simulate to? I know I said I didn't want to make this video super long, but let's have a look here. Uh, it doesn't look like it, unfortunately. So in the next episode, we'll get a decent chunk of sim done, but we'll also have a look around the X-Tech Hockey League. But let's get at least two games of simulation done. We're here here at our home opener at the Dragon's Den. We have Helsinki here coming into the building. They're 1-0 on the year. They've already started their season. Ilya Kovalchuk in the mix. Brant Clark, Shane Wright looking for a huge year from U2. Period. Number one. Let's start off strong and Felix Pox. There you go. Scores a big power play goal. Period. Number two. Okay. 3-1 to one, Felix Pox and Captain Honka. Who says he's not Captain Material? He is Captain Material baby. Felix Pox has two. Captain Honka has one. 32 to 19 are the shots. We're in a good position right now. We're pouring the shots on, closing in on the 40 mark. Seven and a half minutes left. Come on, get another one. Power play, Shane Wright, Brant Clark. You guys have no idea how bad I want those two to be the future studs of this team. I want them to be like 91 overall on the back end. I just love the story of those two guys, like playing midget AAA together and then being Drafted by the exact same X-Tech Hockey League team. I think it's an awesome story. Game number two against Vermont. Let's go. First period. And it's 3-1, to one, baby. Ilya Kovalchuk, JFK, and Cole Lind. What a start. After we allow the first goal on a power play, we come back with three big goals. And Kovalchuk scores his first. You love to see it. Period number two. Okay, 4-1. to one. Vernasty with the wooden stick. All right, boys. We're rolling right now. Thomas, he scores on J. James Vigetti. Shots are dead even at 20 apiece. We have a nice insurance marker here. I wouldn't mind racking up the score a little bit more. Come on, Shane Wright. Brent Clark, someone get on the score sheet. Power play for us. And they kill it off. Looks like we're
we're going to start off the year 2-0. and Unless this is a classic X-Tech jinx. No, the X-Tech jinx is over. We start off the year 2-0. and Okay, I'm having fun with this. Let's go one or two more games here. We, we got the chickens and then we got the devils once again. Maybe we'll go all the way up to Red Deer. That is uh, James Vigetti's old team. So let's go. The chickens are 0-3 and, and we are 2-0. and Let's go, boys. Period number one. And it's 1-1. One, one. All right, Julius Honka. And we started our backup against a bad team. Uh, they get one on us. So it's 1-1 one, one going into period number two. And it's 3-3. All right, we got ourselves a barn burn. Shane Wright, baby, you love to see it. Justin Bailey, Kolachuk, and this guy gets a second of the night. All right, Shane Wright gets on the score sheet. Things you love to see. Power play for the chickens. I think a dragon is much scarier than a chicken, don't you? Couple of power plays. No one can capitalize on it. Power play for us. Kolachuk on the power play. Come on, one time. I got Kolachuk on the power play point. Going into overtime, maybe a shootout. All right, headed into the extra frame. Are we going to go to penalty kicks? In a shootout, let's go up against the chickens. All right, let's start this thing off. Captain Casey Middlestack comes in. Ooh, I thought he had that whole blocker side open, but uh, Kakinen says no. Here comes Felix Pox and the big poke check from whoever the hell they have in net. I don't know who that is. Uh, let's go here. Lewis, I don't know who this guy is. Oh, my God. Kakinen stands him up, says, get the hell out of my crease. Here comes the wood stick with Vernasty. Comes in, little leg kick, and the poke check once again. All right, boys, we can really put the pressure on here with a big save. Come on, Kakinen. And he misses the net. That one makes it easy on him. Who do we got here? Captain Honka to win the game, baby. Oh, he saw an opening, but the goaltender says no. Captain Honka, number six. Here comes Jones coming in, and he tries a shot, and that one's going to go glove side. Oh, boy. All right, here comes Clint Costin. He's got the game on his stick. Why didn't you shoot that on the backhand? Oh, my God. He had the whole net open, and the chick they go ahead and they get their first win of the year. Kovalchuk with three points, though. Not bad. I think having Kovalchuk with Shane Wright is going to be a good thing. Shane Wright's been surrounded by young guys like Cole Lind and JFK. It's going to be nice to see a guy who was in the NHL before he was even born. I think Kovalchuk was drafted, what, 2000? Is that right? I got to look this up. Shane Wright was born in 2004. All right. Ilya Kovalchuk was drafted in 2001. <laughs> That's ridiculous. In 2004, Ilya Kovalchuk was scoring 50 goals a year, pretty much. Oh my god, that's ridiculous. Ilya Kovalchuk, the 40-year-old with the 19-year-old center. I love this story. All right, one more game of slow sim, just because I'm having fun with this. Shane Wright leading the team in scoring. Hey, things you love to see. Vermont is 0-3. We're here at the Hell's Kitchen, October 15th, 2023. Let's go, period number one and a zero zero period number two we're out shooting them like crazy it's one one Philstrom there you go getting his first as a dragon and then this guy he scored on us this guy scored on us last time as well all right let's go here 20 to 11 are the shots we're all over him here Vermont they're looking for their first win but JFK he gives us the go-ahead goal baby we're out shooting them by a ton power play for them that's a huge kill that's a massive kill but a power play goal Philstrom and then Shane Wright oh baby things you love to see John Luke foodie scores but Felix Pox comes right back that's a five goal third period make it a six goal third period Clem Costin wants in on the fun, and we're having ourselves quite a start, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, boy. Philstrom with three points, JFK with two, and Shane Wright with two points of his own. We're looking good right now. I mean, it is only, you know, four games in here, but uh, I'm pretty happy with how things are rolling right now. All right, I promise this will be the last slow sim game. Up against James Vigetti's old team, I hope we start him. Shane Wright leading the team in points, seven points in his first four games, period number one and it's one one and we do start james vaghetti cole lind and eli tolvanen period number two okay three two isaac radcliffe the guy that we wanted julius honka and then carl grunstrom scores so they get two in the second to go up by one headed into the third shots are pretty even here come on boys you can't end this one on a loss you can't do it power play for the hawks big kill power play for us come on kovachuk come on shane wright do it for 
for James Vaghetti. 20. Oh, Eli Tolvanen. Damn it. All right. Well, unfortunately, we're going to end this one off with an L. Oh, we get one. JFK gets one with 49 seconds left, but it's too little too late. That is going to be it. So in the next episode, we are going to be having a look around the X-Tech Hockey League, checking out everyone's team, seeing who's got the best players. Here's how our team is looking here. Not bad. Uh, seven points each for Vernasty and for Wright. Uh, look at Julius Honka. Damn, he's killing it. Kovalchuk's got five. JFK's got four. It is only five games in, so no need to no need to go crazy yet. Brent Clark, I'd like for him to start producing. But as for the goaltenders, I believe it's mostly all been James Vagetti and then Kakinen has that one overtime loss. So actually one more thing. I want to check out who's leading the league in points throughout the first five games. Maybe there's someone who has like 22 points or something. Let's see. Uh, have a look at all skaters and Sujimoto has 13 tied with Ty Ronning. There you go, ladies and gentlemen. Hope you're excited for GM week. The next episode is going to be more of a chill one. We're going to go ahead and have a look around the league. I said I didn't want to make this video a long one and I'm already well over an hour in my recording. Recording. When I record for about an hour, the video turned out to be about 40 minutes long. So there's about 20 minutes of cut content. That's just me either stuttering or saying something wrong or doing something over. Uh, but that's going to be it. Look out for the next episode tomorrow when we go over everyone's team. And I think we're looking pretty good. What do you guys think of the offseason moves? Let me know in the comments. And I'll see you in the next one when we go up against the Miami Unicorns at the Mythical Creature Place. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys tomorrow.